Hey everyone, it's Mickey from Game Maker Cast, and in this video, I wanted to do a quick shader outline tutorial as something like you see here. I used to think that shaders were scary and involved a lot of math, but once you break it down, it's actually not that bad. So let's close the game that we're running and let's start with a fresh project. So you can see that I have an almost fresh project here. And I say almost because I'm using a plugin to help me with the tutorial. So you may see a little bit of extra code in here that we can just ignore. I have my Sprite logo in here, which is just a regular logo that I've been using. Let me actually make a different Sprite. I'll just call this SPR and let's just call this one circle and we'll keep it at 64 by 64. And I'm gonna make this a pink circle. We'll just draw this in just like that. Make sure that I set the anchor point to the middle and then lock it in place. And we'll get back to that one. The next thing that I have is an object logo. In here, you can see that I have this region of extra and I'm just using some plugins so that we can get through the tutorial a little bit easier here. Now I have a draw event and the only thing I really need to do to get this empty project to run. So I got to come over to my shaders and I got to create a shader called SH outline. And I need to make sure that I spell that with a capital O because that's how I referenced it in my code. So you can see that now I should be able to hit F5 and my game should load up and we should have the logo in the center of the room with a gray background. And you can see that we definitely do right here. So I'm gonna close this and we're gonna start making some changes here. So if we take a look at our outline shader, we have two different files that shaders come in. We have a vertex shader, which is the position, and then we have the fragment shader, which is the pixel colors. And we're gonna be dealing with the fragment shader itself. So I know that I've watched quite a few videos and I really didn't understand them. So I kind of want to try and break this down as much as possible. What we need to do with the shader is we need to figure out the size of pixels that we're going to be checking left, right, up and down in order to determine if we can draw an outline or not. So to do this, we're going to be using a texture size. So we need to create a variable within our shader to pass this information through. To do this, we'll create a uniform vector two, and we'll just call it in, and we'll say texel, because we will be referring to them as textures or texels, so we'll keep it as this. Next, I'm gonna go back to my workspace. I'm gonna create, or sorry, look at my object logo, and in the create event, I need to create a handle or a pointer to that particular variable. Now, GameMaker comes with a shader get uniform function, and this is what we're gonna be using. Now it's gonna return an ID, so I'm gonna name this SH, and let's do SH actual handle equals shader get uniform function. Now we pass in what shader we are referring to, which is the outline shader, and now we need the variable name within quotes of what we wanna hook up into. So we wanna make sure that we go to the outline and I always just copy this particular variable here cause it's the one we're referring to and I'll paste it in these quotes. If you're, if you misspell it or your capitalization is off then the actual pointer can't actually happen and you will run into issues. Now that we have that, we can go back to the draw event and right now instead of saying draw self, we're gonna set it up to use the actual shader. So we'll say shader underscore set and we need to set it up to use the sh outline shader. And then we'll say draw sprite. And we could actually say draw self, but I will use the sprite for now. And I'm going to draw whatever the sprite is set to on the object. And you can see that we're set to the sprite logo. I'm going to set it to the image index or so whatever frame we're on and at the x and y position of this object. The final thing I have to do is reset that shader with a shader reset. Now, if I run my game, Nothing's really changed. You can see that everything will still be working once it compiles here, and we're back to what we had before. Now, like I said, we need to pass in that information to the shader. So underneath shader set, we'll create a couple new variables. We're gonna create a variable for our texture, and we're, like I, we're not gonna be using the sprite width and height. We're gonna be using a different variable here. So what we're going to be using is, sorry, different function is a sprite get texture. Now when GameMaker compiles, it creates a texture page and this is what we're actually referring to. So I want the sprite 
index and the sub image. So I will say the image index as well. So whatever the sprite is set to on this particular object and whatever frame we're on, we want the texture, um, the texture pointer. So this would point to the texture within the package that we're going to create. So the next thing we need to do is create a new variable for the width for texture width. And we could say texture underscore get, and in here we'll have a text width, and then we pass in that pointer to their, our own texture. And then we want to change this to the T height and get the height of the text. So now with that all done, we have to pass it into the shader and we can do this using the shader set uniform function. And we're going to use the handle, which is the textual handle. And now we pass in two variables. We pass in the T width and the T height. The reason why we're passing in two variables like this is because in the shader itself, we said that it's going to be a vector two. So that's an X and a Y. So we need to pass in two variables instead of just one. So with all of this information here, we should be able to run our game. And as long as we've done everything correctly, our game should run without any errors and we should see our logo. So now that we see our logo, I'll just put it in the top right here in the shader itself. If I open it up now, we can actually start doing some coding. If I go to the fragment shader, just to see how everything works, the GL frag color is the end pixel color of that particular location. So if we were to set the GL frag color to, let's say plain dot white, we want to make sure this is a vector four. You can see that in the top right, my logo has changed to completely white. So that means that everything I've done is actually working. So I can change this back to get my logo back. Now, what we need to do is we need to instead play with a different color instead of GL fray color. And then we're going to set the pixel color to that in the end. So we're going to create a new vector four, and we'll just call it new color. The reason we're using a vector four is because a pixel is made up of red, green, blue, and an alpha value. And we're going to copy what game maker has here and just clean up a little bit. So all this, uh, all this line is saying is on the current X and Y coordinate get that current pixel and assign it to the new color. So I can basically take the GL fray color and just say, use new color. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to get the resolution or the pixel size that we're going to be checking for. And remember we passed in this textual value and this is going to be a very small number. So we could say a vector two because we need an X and Y and we'll just call this pixel size equals the in textual. And I will say times 2.0. The reason I'm using 2.0 is because this is going to be the thickness of the line that I'm drawing around the sprite. You could leave this and it would just be a 1.0, or you could bump this up to say something like three. If we were to keep this a lot higher, say six, we'll run into problems, but let's go through and figure out what those problems will be. The next thing we need to do is we need to determine whether a pixel has an alpha value of zero. So we could say if the current texture that we're on and the current pixel, if that alpha value is less or equal to 0, 0.0, then we know that we are in here. And for now, let's just change the new color to equal a vector four of 1.0. So once I save this, you can see that my sprite, the background has turned white because it has a alpha value of zero. So anytime it finds a pixel with an alpha value of zero, we're going to change it to a white color. So this is kind of the same concept that we're going to be doing with this outline shader. We're going to go from the left to the right. We're going to go through each line until we hit a pixel that does not have an alpha value of zero. And then we can draw the white outline above to left to the right and below it. So some simple math that we're going to go through here. So we're going to create a float and we're going to, going to say a float of 0.0. .0. We're going to call it alpha. Next, we need to check this alpha. So we'll say it's going to be the maximum amount of alpha. And this max is just like a game maker function. It will have the maximum value. So what we're going to do is we're going to say whatever the max alpha of this guy right here. So the current pixel that we're on, if that is equal to something, then we'll say if the alpha is bigger than 0, 0.0, then what we want to do is we want to set the new color to a vector four 
of 1.0. Now this isn't gonna work, so I'm not gonna hit save yet. And the reason this isn't gonna work is because we are checking the X and Y coordinate of that particular pixel. What we need to do is we need to check the neighboring pixels. So we need to move this one to the left to start off with. So we're gonna take the texture coordinate and we're gonna separate it out into the X and the Y positions. And now I wanna move one to the left. So I will use my pixel size dot X. Now let's see if that actually changed anything here. So I'll switch to only my game. Actually, let's close the game and reopen it. I know I always have problems with this, so let's do that. Now once my game compiles, we'll switch to the full screen and see if everything is working. Hey everyone, you know what time it is. It's time to give away a free game. Check out this game called Under Hero on Humble Bundle or follow the link below in order to grab it for yourself. First come, first serve. So let me switch to the full screen here. You can see that right now we have everything being drawn and then we have that white outline to the right. So that means that everything is working. So let's carry on with our shader and hopefully we won't run into any more problems. So in the alpha, we're checking the maximum value. And now what I want to do is not also, or sorry, also check the right position. So I can copy and paste this alpha line, but I want to make sure I add to the alpha. So instead of saying X minus pixel size, I'll say X plus pixel size. So now if I save, it might be a little hard to see, but in the top right hand corner, you can see that the uh, white outline is now on the left and right. The very last thing we need to do is change it to up and down as well. So I'll just take this line and I'll paste it two more times. And then instead of saying the X plus equals or X minus equals, I'll say the text coordinate Y minus the pixel size dot Y. And we'll do the exact same, but we'll add the pixel size dot Y. Okay, so if I save my game and I switch to the full screen, you can see that now we have the outline of our game, or I should say our sprite. Now, the one thing that I want to point out is you can see here on the left, everything is currently being uh, cropped off. So if we actually even go back and we close this and we go to our logo and we say we want to resize the canvas, let's say 650 by 650. Even if we resize this canvas and we run it, that won't actually fix our problem. And we'll get to that in just one second as soon as this opens. So you can see that right here, everything is still being cropped off. And I should mention also at the top. Now, the reason everything is being cropped off is because automatically GameMaker will crop our images that go into the, go into the texture page. So if I go to tools and go to texture groups, you can see that we're right here, we have an automatic crop. We want to make sure that we turn that off. And now when we run our game, we should see that nothing is cropped. However, the one thing we might notice is because of our line height, things may not look very good. If I switch to the full screen here, you can see that down here at the bottom, we have some white lines coming in, even though we don't have that in our sprite itself. Now, the reason we have that is if I go to my shader outline and let's say I increase this to say 10 and I hit save, you can see the white lines are starting to come in more. Let's say I do a hundred. So you can see that everything is really messed up right now. Now, the reason that this is doing it is because their texture size only has a certain amount of padding in it. So if I wanted to say to set this to something very high, I would need to make sure that the pixel size around here has enough room to support that particular width. So that is just the one thing to pay attention to. So like I said, even if I set it to the circle here and I close my game and rerun it, everything should still work. We should see a pink circle with a white outline here. And once again, <laughs> let me go in and let me prop this image here. Let me go here and let's resize it. And let's say 256 by 256. And the one thing to remember by doing this, adding the padding, you're actually going to add more megabytes to your game because of the texture size. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. But you can see that I didn't add enough padding. So I do have the white lines around here. So the simple fix would just be to go into my shader, change the amount, say something like two, and then you can see that it looks a lot better. Hopefully you found this video useful and I didn't ramble on too much. Shaders are hard, I will say that, but they're not really scary. Just take some playing around until you get used to it. Thanks for watching.